subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello friends. On 20th of November, the Chief of Defence Force of the Australian Armed Forces in a path-breaking televised address apologized to the people of Afghanistan for human rights violations perpetrated by the Australian Special Forces from 2005 to 2016 he also apologized to the people of australia that the conduct of the armed forces has not been up to their expectations it's pertinent to mention that this was a course correct because for the last one decade the media had been reporting about human rights violations done by the Australian special forces in Afghanistan a combination of media public and political pressure forced the Australian army to take necessary action but it did take the necessary action 10 days before this on the 10th of November the chairman joint chiefs of staff united states army again publicly reiterated that the oath taken by the soldiers of the united states armed forces is to the constitution and not to any individual or political dispensation this was mere reiteration of what is well known probably the need for doing this was that since president trump was reluctant to accept the electoral verdict he had sacked the defense secretary a few days earlier and the chief of general staff the chairman joint chiefs of staff had made this statement to preempt the president from getting the military involved in any manner in his electoral fight in the month of june the chairman joint chiefs of staff had once again done a course correction when he was inward inadvertently sucked into a photo op done by the president outside a church he again publicly declared that he should not have been there as it appeared that he was taking part in domestic politics these two actions by the chiefs of the australian and the united states armed forces in far off places have important lessons for the indian military indian militaries human rights reputation has taken a beating in the, the last few years and also there are questions being raised about its politicization let there be no doubt that the indian army has got a stellar record as far as human rights upholding human rights is concerned it is well laid out in its rules regulations law as well as command guidance that the indian army has to respect human rights and will always conduct people friendly operations in an insurgency environment however two things have happened one is a warped sense of honor that forces the army to deny obfuscate and delay investigations into human rights violations to protect its own reputation and also to enhance the reputation of units formations regiments human rights violations get committed as the kill ratio has to be shown as much higher to gain laurels and rewards when action is taken firstly it is delayed secondly it is done reluctantly when forced by the media or to the judiciary and then 
The proceedings are conducted in such a shoddy manner that they do not withstand the scrutiny of the Armed Forces Tribunal and the Supreme Court during review petitions. Recently, there was this case of the Machil encounter where the perpetrators had been punished in 2014 to very severe punishment. And subsequently, the Armed Forces Tribunal on technical grounds, that is the flawed conduct of the court martial, had suspended their sentence. Also, it is pertinent to mention that the insurgencies that are, the sessionist insurgencies that are being perpetrated on our periphery are with ethnic, are done by ethnic and religious minorities. Now, in an environment of new nationalism, where the majority is uh, acting in a predominant manner, and the minorities are under stress. This environment has creeped into the armed forces also through the social media. And the consequences that may come up are not sort of very good for the future of the armed forces. Nothing highlights this more than the case of the human shield, wherein a down and right rogue action was applauded, supported by the public, the media, and the government. And the army also got sucked into the same environment. It lauded and rewarded a rogue officer, setting a very poor example for all times to come. There is a need for the army to course correct. As far as the politicization of the army is concerned, in a democracy, there should be no doubt that the army functions under the elected government. But like the United States Army, Indian Army also takes an oath to the constitution and not to individual personalities or to the political party in power. It has, it's supposed to remain a political and it's not supposed to have any ideological leanings. In the last six, seven years, the Indian Army has been deified and identified with every facet of national life. It's being blatantly exploited for electoral politics and its name is used practically everywhere to deride any critics of the government. The dividing line between the armed forces and the government has got blurred. You cannot hold either of them accountable for the lapses. The best example of this is what is happening in Eastern Ladakh. Everyone is well aware of that and I will not elaborate. To sum up, it's time for the Indian military to course correct and resurrect its reputation with respect to upholding human rights and with respect to its apolitical status and oath to the constitution. History is replete with examples when our militaries have come to grief for failure to do so. Enjoy reading the column.